Welcome to John Gets Games. Today, I'll be doing a full two-player playthrough of 50 First State, the Master Set Edition. In this one to four player game, you will be managing a hand of multi-use cards that can be played into a tableau in front of you in order to create engines that will produce resources in order to let you to build more cards, as well as destroying cards from your hand and from your opponent's tableaus to get more resources to keep that engine going. This game is a race to 25 victory points, and the box comes with the base game as well as two separate expansions that can be shuffled in. For this playthrough, I will just be playing the base game. So I think that's enough talking about it. Let's jump right into the game, and I'll explain how it works as we're going. Here's our starting setup for 50 First State. Since we're doing a two-player game, we will be playing the role of the Mutants Union, and we'll be going against the Merchants Guild. Each player received six cards randomly from the top of the deck, and before we even start playing the game, each of us needs to discard two of these so we begin the game with only four cards. In order for us to figure out which cards we want to destroy, let's go through a quick anatomy of a card. The most important aspect of the entire card is this distance number that is in the top left. This is effectively how expensive it is to do anything with that card, whether it be make a deal, build the building, destroy the card, all those different things are associated with that number, so these distance ones are much cheaper than this distance three, for instance. And another, the other really big part of the card really is the text down in the bottom, which will tell you what the card is going to do. There are three different types of cards in the game. You have production cards, feature cards, and action cards, and when you play them, they'll go out into different uh, rows associated with those. So if we look at the cards here, this is an open production building, which is going to make us uh, gears, which are pretty good, so that's not the worst thing in the world, especially considering if we look at our base production, we don't make any gears anyway. Uh, the next card, it says it's an action. So the way these work is they are built down into this action area, and as your entire turn's action, because you only get one action a turn, you could do this in order to get what it says. So this says, spend a person and a gear to get three gray contact tokens. This is a really good card. I'll explain why in just a little bit. We're definitely not getting rid of this. And this one right here says, open production, make guns. So getting guns helps you do various things. So being able to produce things is good. Now this card here says, feature, and it doesn't really have any um, text doubt over here. And it says, building bonus, get one victory point for every uh, yellow uh, brick token icon in the buildings that you have in your player area, and we don't have any yet. So this is kind of a uh, victory point dump, this little star is victory points. So I think we definitely don't want to keep this card in our hand, it's not going to do anything for us. We need to kind of build an engine before we make points. This one is going to let us uh, produce bricks, uh, so that's good, we might want to keep that in our hand. And lastly, this card is really expensive, it's three distance, and what it lets you do is spend two gears in order to get two victory points, and you can do it twice a turn. But at this point, we make no gears. I think this is a bit late game for us, so let's go ahead and discard both of these cards and stick with this as our starting hand. Our opponent is the Merchant's Guild, and they have looked at their cards and decided they're going to discard both of these. I won't be explaining the thoughts behind our opponent's turns. I'll just show you what they end up doing, and we'll see who wins. All right, so we're now ready to start playing the game. We are the start players you can see here, and the first thing you do is the lookout phase on a turn, and the very beginning of that is you reveal the top card of both of these connection decks, and these just offer more ways to grab blue and red contact tokens, and I'll explain why those are good in just a little bit. And then what we do is we draw cards equal to the number of players plus one, and we put them face up in the middle of the table, and starting with us as the starting player, we will draw one of these cards, then our opponent will draw one, and then the third will get discarded. We've got a variety of different costing cards here. We've got a 1, a 2, and a 3 when it comes to the distance. And we see this one produces people, and it also has a building bonus. That means when this card gets built into a player's area, as a one-time effect, you also get this bonus down here. So this makes one person a turn, plus one, one time. This one right here makes cards, and those are cards that you draw from the top of your deck and put into your hand. And that's really great, especially considering it has a building bonus of also getting cards. And uh, in fact, you can destroy this card for cards or make a deal for cards. This is all about cards. And having more stuff in your hand gives you more options, and that's a really good thing. And finally, this negotiator is really expensive with a distance of three, and it lets you spend people, and you get to discard deals, which I'll explain in just a little bit, to get uh, two victory points, which is pretty good, but that's a bit of a late game thing. I think we definitely want to grab this pub to give us more options for uh, having cards in our hand, and our opponent is going to grab this school. And now we do that one more time, so we draw three more cards, but this time our opponent starts first, they get to draw one of these cards, and then we get to pick from the remaining two. They decide they want to grab this motel, so that goes into their hand, and it leaves us with a Thieves' Den and a Quarry. The Thieves' Den is a feature, which means it's kind of an ongoing effect, and this one's going to let us store up to two of these different uh, items, as well as two people, uh, at the end of every turn. Normally you lose all excess goods that you weren't able to use on each turn. And this one right here just lets us make bricks. 
I think let's go ahead and keep this thieves done. We might find ourselves in a situation where we don't want to waste things at the end of our turn, so we'll get discard this. And now it's the production phase. Each player simultaneously grabs all these resources that they can use on the turn. So we begin by grabbing three people, then we also get one gun, and we get one gray contact token. And lastly, we get one extra card, which is just random off the top of the deck into our hand. And now we've reached the action phase. Uh, on your turn, you just take one action, and then it goes to your opponent who takes an action, and you bounce back and forth until both players have passed. For the most part, the different actions that you take on a turn will not directly affect your opponent, but there are two actions in particular that have a big effect because you can deny some pretty good stuff, and those are these two connection cards down here. Now, in order to use these, you have to spend two of your workers to go over, and then you draw this card into your hand. Now, if you look at this merchant's card right here, it says instant gain two blue contact tokens. Now, we are the Mutants Union, and if you look down here on our player board, we can spend one fuel tank in order to get a single blue contact token, which is a pretty bad conversion rate. And we don't even have any fuel tanks at this point, so it probably makes sense for us to spend the two people to grab these two blue tokens. It's a much better way to get these tokens. And the reason this is important is because we need blue tokens in order to make deals, and making deals is going to get us resources, which lets us do things. So we're going to start by sending these two people away. We'll take this card, put it into our hand, and we can activate it on a later turn. And most importantly, a new one is not revealed, uh, and it won't come back again until the beginning of the next turn, so we've denied this option from our opponent. The Merchant Guild is going to do something quite similar. They're going to spend these two people in order to go to the Punks, which is going to let them, on a future turn, gain two red contact tokens, which lets them destroy various things. So this is going to go into their hand, and these people go away. All right, I think it's time for us to build something. We don't quite need to use this card yet. It's in our hand, and we can play that later on in the turn. We have this card called Huge Machinery. In fact, we actually got two of them. And it has one distance away, which means in order to play this down into our area, we need to spend a gray contact token. The gray tokens are all about building buildings down, and you spend the number equal to the distance. So this gray contact token gets discarded, and then we can build this down into our zone. Now, you'll notice that this is an action card, and it says you can spend one worker and one gear in order to get three more of these gray contact tokens. So this is really good at getting us these to let us build more stuff. It kind of makes sense since it's called heavy machinery. So that's going to go down into that spot of our player board, and that's going to end our turn. For the Merchant Guild's action, they're going to go ahead and play this Punk's card, which is just going to immediately gain them two of these red contact tokens, and they can use these to destroy cards from their hand in order to get more resources, and potentially destroy, destroy cards from our zone, but two is not going to be quite enough. And the reason for that is you can see these three, four, and five numbers on our player board. These are the defense values of the different types of cards. So in order to destroy this heavy machinery, my opponent would need to spend five red contact tokens, and they just got two. So for right now, they're probably planning on doing something different as opposed to destroying this card right here. In order for us to actually use this awesome card, the huge machinery, we need a worker and a gear. And right now, we only have a worker. So the main way for us to get a gear at this point in the game is going to be to try to destroy a card in our hand. And as you can see, this dox right here, it's only distance one away. And if we were to destroy it, we would get two gears. So in order to destroy this card, it's going to cost a single red contact token because it's one distance away. And fortunately for us, we can see that if we spend a gun, we get three red contact tokens. That's kind of our asymmetric racial ability is we are quite mean, I suppose. So let's go ahead and spend this gun. We put it on our player board. And that gives us three of these red contact tokens that we can use to destroy some stuff. It's good to note that these three actions on the player board can only be used once per turn, like all the main actions. That's just a general rule, unless it says otherwise, you can only use it once. But you can do each of them separately, and you put the resources on your board to show that you've used that so you don't do it again. There's another ability down here which lets you spend two of your workers in order to grab a card from the top of the deck, or to grab one of these goods, but you can do that as many times as you want. And our merchant opponent decides to do exactly that. They're going to spend one of their two red contact tokens in order to raise this docks here, which is going to get them two of these gear symbols. So this card is gone, and now they've got two gears. So let's go ahead and follow suit and do the exact same thing that our opponent just did, because we also need those gears. So we'll spend this single red token, we destroy a docks of our own, and we'll grab two gears. The merchant guild decides to activate this board action, which lets them spend two gears in order to gain two of these gray contact tokens. So we got a fair number of cards in our hand, and two of them in particular we really do want to build into our area. The first is the Thieves' Den because it's going to let us save two guns or uh, oil, gears, bricks, and as well as potentially two people between every turn so we don't lose them. And I don't think we're going to have a good way to use both of our gears, so this would save us one of those gears. 
And then there's the pub, which just generates us cards, and having more cards is obviously a good thing. So that is a collective distance of three. Let's go ahead and use our heavy machinery down here. So that's gonna cost this one worker and this one gear, and we put it down on the card to show that we've used it so we don't accidentally use it again in a turn because you can only use it once per overall turn, and that is gonna generate us the three contact tokens that we're gonna need in order to build those buildings we want to. The Merchant's Guild has decided to build this deserted colony. It's a distance two, which means they're gonna spend these two gray contact tokens, and it lets them spend one person to gain an ammo, and this can be activated twice on every turn. Now, ammo is pretty cool because it acts as a wild. It could be any of the four main resources, which are fuels, gear, gas, and guns. All right, I think we should get to building, and we wanna make this pub because it's gonna draw us two cards on the top of the deck, which might uh, affect how we're gonna play out the rest of our turn. So let's go ahead and put this guy down. It's a distance two away, which means it's gonna cost two of these gray contact tokens. And as I said before, the moment you build any production buildings, it immediately produces, so we get one card, and then as a building bonus of one card. Now this is an open production building, which is a little special. The way these work is just like I said for me. However, my opponent has the ability to use this production building as well. But in order to do that, they have to give me one worker and I get to put it in my pool and I get to use it, but then they get to take the card. So I have presented my opponent with a good way to generate more cards, but every time they do it, I'll get workers and I can use workers to you know, use my huge machinery. So it's not the worst thing in the world. So let's go ahead and grab those two cards. Let's see what they are. We got an abandoned suburbs. It's the distance three, so it's really far away. It lets us spend two bricks to gain two victory points. We can do that up to twice, so it's a bit of an endgame uh, cash out card. Oh, and then a church, which is just a feature with a building bonus of two victory points immediately, so neither of these are particularly engine building, but this one can also be destroyed for just two victory points. And I haven't mentioned this yet, but the game is a victory point race. Once a player hits 25 victory points, then you will finish that round, and whoever has the most points at the end of that round is going to win, and every single building in your state here is going to be worth one additional point. So getting victory points is good, especially racing to get there while your opponent might be building too big of an engine. You want to just jump up as fast as you can. So that church, getting two victory points for just destroying it, that's not too bad. The Merchant's Guild is now going to build a school. It's only a distance of one away, so it uses this single gray contact token. And you can see it's going to produce them one person, and then it has a building bonus of making a person. So as soon as they place that down, they're going to get two more people into their supply. I think it's time for us to use this Merchant's Card. It's going to spend our entire action to do so, and we're just going to gain two blue contact tokens, which will allow us to make deals, which I haven't gone into too much detail on, but I will on the next turn. The Merchant Guild has decided to spend their fuel finally, and if you'll notice down here, they get to spend one fuel and it will get them three blue contact tokens. And we know we spend one fuel to only get one, but they are kind of the opposite. They spend a gun and they only get two of the red contact tokens, whereas we get three. So the asymmetry there kind of balances itself out. So we'll go ahead and give them their three tokens. In order to make a deal, we need to spend these blue tokens equal to the distance of the card. Now, if we go ahead and look at that church that we just drew, we see that it's a distance two. And if you look at the bottom of this card, and in fact, every card that we have in our hand, that is a resource that that card will generate for us at the beginning of every single turn if we turn it into a deal. We kind of slide it in up there. So we have the option of maybe building bricks, getting guns, getting gears, and ammo. And ammo is really nice because that's a bit of a wild. But most importantly, because this is a victory point race, I think that this church, we could just destroy it to get two points. But we know that the game is probably going to go more than two turns. So the best way to squeeze victory points out of this card is to turn it into a deal. So let's go ahead and spend these two blue contact tokens. We'll spin this over, slide it underneath the deal section, and this is going to generate us one point at the beginning of every turn. But whenever you make a deal, just like whenever you produce, you immediately get whatever it produces. So we are the red player, so we immediately get one victory point, and we're currently in the lead. The Merchant's Guild has decided they want to use the open production building that we have over here, the pub. So they're going to take this worker here, <laughs> and they'll put it on the pub, and they will immediately do the open production of drawing a single card from the top of the deck. It's good to know that you're never allowed to activate an open production building that you yourself have built. Well, we had a bit of a plan earlier to build this Thieves' Den at a distance of one, so let's go ahead and execute that. So we'll put the Thieves' Den down here on the feature line, and we'll spend the single gray token. So now, at the end of a turn, we'll potentially be able to save some of our resources as opposed to losing everything. The Merchant Guild wants to make a deal with this negotiator. They're a distance of three, which is quite a bit, so they'll spend all three of these blue contact tokens. This gets flipped around, and it's going to make them an ammo immediately and at the beginning of every single subsequent turn. And once again, this is a wild resource, which is pretty nice. 
So we've got four cards left, a single gear, and two of these red contact tokens. And we could potentially just pass right now. And we wouldn't take any more actions and our opponent could keep going because there's not a whole lot we can do. This gear doesn't do anything for us. We would need a second gear in order to get more gray contact tokens here. And we don't really have a way of getting a second gear at this point. And, um, well, these red contact tokens, all they can do is raise things from your hand or from your opponent. And I would need a third one in order to destroy my opponent's cards. So the other option we do have is we could spend one of these uh, contact tokens to destroy this huge machinery in our hand. Now, this is a bit of an interesting decision because we could hold on to this and try to build it, and then we could do this twice on a turn and get tons of these gray contact card, uh, tokens. However, uh, if we were to destroy any of these other cards, well, we would get bricks or guns, and those, most of those would just disappear at the end of a turn. We can save two things a turn, but we already have one thing we want to save. But if we did destroy this, then we could potentially build this brick supplier at a distance of two, and it would make one brick for every brick symbol in our state to a maximum of three. We only, this would count for itself, so it would do that. We don't have any others, but if we got more of these brick symbols down, then this would continue to make more and more bricks. And the reason bricks are important, well, I'll go into the specifics of it later, but bricks allow you to upgrade the buildings you currently have for better buildings at a easier conversion rate than spending a bunch of different gray tokens. So I think for the sake of uh, interesting gameplay, let's go ahead and do that, even though it might make more sense to win the game to hold on to this um, we can see let's go ahead and just destroy it and see how this plays out so we'll uh, spend one red contact token because it's a distance of one and we'll grab two of these gray uh, contact tokens the merchant's guild is going to use this ammo as a gun in order to activate this action portion of their uh, area what i like to do is actually turn it into a gun to show that i've used the gun action down there and for that they will get two more red contact tokens it's back to us, and we pretty much have only one thing we can do. We could spend these two gray tokens, which we just got last turn, and we're going to go ahead and build that brick supplier. And its production is one brick for every brick icon in our state. It's currently one. So here's the one brick, and it's not the end of the world to have it and not use it, because we have this Thieves' Den, which lets us save up to two things. So there's two things. It's the Merchant Guild's turn, and they are going to spend all three of these tokens. However, they decide they don't want to raise a card from their hand. No, they want to raise a card from my state. With three tokens, they can only target my production buildings because the feature costs four to kill and the action costs five. And with these three, they've decided they're going to destroy the pub. Now, they were able to use it once a turn, but when they destroy it, they're going to immediately draw three cards, which they definitely like, and they can save those between turns. And it stops me from drawing extra cards on my next turn. So when this happens, well, first of all, these are discarded. And what happens is this gets flipped over, but as it's getting flipped over, I get a consolation prize kind of scavenging through the ruins, and that is I get whatever uh, that deal would have been for the card it was destroyed, which is a card. So this gets flipped over, and we do get one more card from the top of the deck, which kind of counts for the production we would have made on that turn, but the game is going to definitely last more than two turns, so that stops my ability to get lots of cards. This is now considered a ruin, and that is somewhat important, and I'll explain why pretty soon, actually. And then, of course, the blue player gets three cards from the top of the deck into their hand. So it's back to us, and we were planning on passing because we didn't really have anything else to do. However, that has changed a little bit. So we now have this brick, and I mentioned before that this lets you kind of upgrade um, your buildings. It's technically called a development action. And in order to develop a building, you discard the brick, and you take a card from your hand, and you discard a card from your tableau that matches at least one of the icons. So, for instance, I could have placed this card down and discarded this one because the brick icon matches there. However, we now have a Ruins, and when you have a Ruins, it counts as every single icon in the game, which means I can develop any of these cards into my board for discarding this one right here and one brick. And we have a brick, so let's go ahead and do it. We will spend this, and the nice thing about developing is we can do any card. It doesn't matter what the current distance is. So we'll discard this because it matches any of the symbols on our board, and I think we should definitely play one of these Distance 3 cards because those are really expensive and hard to get out. We see down here, this lets us spend two uh, bricks in order to get two victory points. We can do that twice. And we do have this brick supplier, which right now only makes one brick a turn, but it could make more if we get more brick symbols. And in fact, this has a brick symbol on it. So if I put this down, I would generate two brick next turn, and I could spend that two brick to get two points, which is not bad. And the skyscraper says I can spend a person and two brick to get three points, but I can only do this once. So this is actually kind of an interesting decision between the two. They also both do a deal for bricks down here. So the difference between them is relatively minor, 
This one could potentially be used twice, and this one also costs people, so let's go ahead and build these abandoned suburbs. It is an action, so it goes down here, and of course, we spent the brick to do that, so that really kind of worked in our favor, even though we ended up losing that production building. The Merchant Guild player decides to spend both of their workers because they would be lost if they passed anyway. They'll go down here and they'll grab one card from the top of the deck because again, for every two people you put down, you could take a card or one of the resources. And it's good to note that whenever you have actions that can be activated multiple times, this one infinitely and that other card I just placed that lets you do it twice, you can activate it multiple times for a single action or do it now and then do it later on in your turn. So these are going to get discarded and this gets added into their significant hand at this point. It's back to us, and I'm not sure if we want to do anything more. Uh, we can't do anything with this skyscraper at all, and we have the potential to uh, raise this uh, assassin here. It's only distance one, and we have a single red in our area, and that would get us two guns. And the issue is that normally you lose all your stuff, but we could save up to two things. Well, that would be a gear and two guns. So we would be wasting a gun or wasting a uh, red contact token, but if we waste a gun, we also lose this card, and this card potentially makes us a gun every turn if we were to build it as a deal or even as a production on the next turn. So I think we want to hold on to this. We're going to go ahead and pass. It's important to note that once you've passed, opponents can't use any open production buildings you have, and they also can't attack your buildings, although it looks like maybe I passed a little bit too late to be protected, but that's not that big of a deal. The blue player's got lots of cards, but they have no resources, and they choose to pass at this point. Once both players have passed, like they have, this ends the round. At this point, we go into cleanup mode. We're going to take all of the different resources that were spent on various actions, and we're going to discard those back to the bank. And then we're going to change the first player token, uh, marker clockwise in a two-player game. It's just going to shift over to the opponent. And as I've mentioned a couple times, you will lose everything that you weren't able to save. So I can save this gear here, but the Thieves' Den says nothing about saving red contact tokens. So this one disappears, but we'll have access to that gear on the next turn. The only thing that's always safe are the cards in our hand because every player board has a feature printed on it says do not discard cards from your hand during the cleanup phase. So cleanup phase is over. We now move into the lookout phase for the second turn of the game. First things first, we reveal two new connection cards. We've got a junk train. This is better than the one we saw last turn. This is just going to give you three blue contact tokens. And then we've got thugs, which is also better than the one we saw last turn. But it forces you to spend a gun and you get three red contact tokens. And now we draw three cards. We reveal them, and then each uh, player draws one. It's going to start with the Merchant's Guild because they're the current star player. They've decided they want to grab this Construction Vehicles. It's a pretty great card. It just generates great contact tokens, uh, two of them when you first build it, or you could just destroy it to get a couple great contact tokens as well. So they're going to take that card, and now we get to choose between these two here. We have a Wrecked Tank, which is just uh, victory points. You get one victory point for every one of these kind of lime green Statue of Liberty symbols in your area, up to a maximum of five. You could also make a deal out of it and get a victory point every turn, which, as we see, we already did that once. That's pretty good. And then we have the arena, which lets you spend a gun. Or no, I'm sorry. You get to make a gun for every gun symbol that you have in your area. And right now, we don't have any. This would be the first of those. It would generate guns. We already make guns. So between the two of these, I think the thing that probably makes the most sense is to take this wreck tank and maybe we'll try to put it into a deal and make even more victory points out of it. And now we draw three more cards, and we get to uh, have first dibs at it this time. The first one is a camp. We see it's a feature. It's got a building bonus that we can put three workers on here, and they don't get removed during cleanup. And you could use them as if they were in your supply, but it never gets refilled, so it's a bit of three one-time use workers. The quarry just makes a brick every turn, and it's open production, so your opponent can use it, which is not the best thing in the world. And then a museum, which is very similar to the wreck tank that we just saw. It's going to make us one victory point for every one of those same Statue of Liberty symbols, and it also has a victory point thing in the bottom. It's also good to note that you could spoil this one to take a victory point and get a card. So, I don't know, we're already making quite a bit of bricks in our area, although if we play this, we would generate even more bricks, but we don't really have a way... Ah, I take it back, we have a pretty good way of cashing these out, because we were able to get this abandoned suburbs, which lets us spend two bricks to get two victory points. So, I think that does it for us. We're going to grab this quarry, even though our opponent can use it. And the Merchant Guild decides they're going to take the camp. Now players simultaneously produce on all of the various stuff that they make, which is these production spots, the deals, and the production cards that they have been able to make. So this means we get three people, one gun, we're going to get two bricks for this brick supplier because we now have these two brick symbols in our area. We get the one gray, and this deal is now going to generate us a victory point, which is nice. So that brings us up to two victory points. And lastly, we get to draw one more card off the top of the deck and see what it is. It's an excavator. Ooh. This is an open production. It lets us build a development token. 
These are essentially an upgraded brick when you try to do a development action. When you do a brick, you have to match up the symbols between the old card and the new. For a develop action, you can get rid of any card and put a new one down. And I just realized that I forgot to give myself a victory point when I did that development action in the last turn. Every time you do developing actions, you get a point. So I'll just push that over there. So we're actually at three points. And of course, this gear that we saved is going to go into our general supply. The Merchant Guild's first action will be to build these construction vehicles. It's going to cost a single gray contact token because it's distance one. And it is an open production of one gray contact token. And then they also get another one as a building bonus, which means they get two back. Before we play any cards or activate any of our buildings, I think we really do want to get this junk train again. We still have a terrible conversion rate for making these blue uh, contact tokens. We don't even have any fuel. So let's go ahead and spend two people in order to get this junk train into our hand. It's going to give us three contact tokens, uh, blue ones, later on the turn, which we'll be able to use to make some deals. And we have some good stuff. We can potentially get guns or more victory points. The Merchant's Guild is going to spend their fuel in order to get three blue contact tokens. And there's definitely one thing that we want to do on this turn, and that is to use the huge machinery. So let's go ahead and do that before I potentially forget and use this person for something else. So that costs a single person and the single gear that we have, and that's going to get us three gray contact tokens. The Merchant's Guild wants to make a deal with this wrecked tank here. It's a distance of two, so it's going to cost two of their blue contact tokens, and it is a victory point on the backside. So they slide this in here. And then, of course, every time you get a new deal, you immediately evaluate it, so they're going to get a point. And this gets them on the board. It's back to us, and looking at the cards that we have in our hand, uh, I think one thing we want to do is actually try to raise this card right here. It's a distance of three. It would get us three brick and a victory point, and that would be nice because that would put us at five bricks. And we can use four of those to get four victory points right away and potentially save the last brick to roll into the next turns. Uh, I, the other thing we could do is try to build this, but it is quite expensive. It lets us spend a person and two brick to get three victory points, but we don't make people very well at this point. And we already have a way to spend four bricks a turn to get points, so I think this is a bit unnecessary when added in with that, when going for that specific brick resource. So let's go ahead and spend our only gun here, and that'll make us our three red contact tokens. The Merchant's Guild is not done making deals, however. They're going to spend this single blue contact token to make a deal with the old cinema, it's only distance one, and it also has a victory point on there. You'll notice if it was built, it would just make one point, so I may as well make it into a deal where it'll make even more points than that. So they now have two deals with victory points on them, and that'll get them one more point. At this point, I'm starting to get a little concerned about my hand size. Now, it might seem like I have quite a bit of cards, but looking at the stuff I have, uh, four great contact tokens is quite a few, so I'll be able to build some of these cards. I know I grabbed this, which is going to give me three blue contact tokens, which I will use to make deals, which means this hand is going to evaporate pretty quickly, and I might be kind of regretting even taking this, unfortunately, but I did it, so I'm going to have to deal with those consequences. Now, the main way that you can get more cards is by spending two uh, workers and getting more cards, and I look over at my opponent. They have a really big hand, and I'm kind of concerned with the amount of workers they have. I've got these three uh, red contact tokens, and I have a couple different options. One of them is I could totally destroy this skyscraper right here. It would get me a victory point as well as three bricks, and I could use uh, two of those three bricks along with these to get a bunch of victory points from this uh, abandoned suburbs here. But I feel like my engine isn't quite going well enough in order to fully dedicate to getting lots of victory points at this point. I feel like what I should probably do is try to hamper my opponent, maybe try to destroy one of their production buildings with these three things and uh, slow down their production. I've got two options. I can destroy this construction vehicles in order to grab two gray uh, tokens for myself. The thing is I'm almost drowning in gray tokens right now. I, I would be able to build everything in my hand and really not have any good resources. And some of the things in my hand I actually want to make deals out of, so that's probably not great. What makes a lot more sense, I think, for us is to destroy this school. It will get us two people. It will give our opponent one person. But we can turn these two people into another card, and it stops our opponent from continuing to get more and more people. Because as you can see, they started with quite a few. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll destroy that. The Merchant Skill is going to get this person over here. And we'll get two workers of our own. The Merchant Skill doesn't look too phased by that, unfortunately, because they're going to build a camp. It's going to use one of their two gray tokens. And what it does is it lets you put three workers on this card. They never get uh, removed from the card during cleanup. And they're essentially one-time use. You can spend them at any point. So this goes down here. And there are the three extra workers. So, man, they have tons of workers to deal with that. Might have backfired a little bit for us. So it is back to us, and we have some good options, but I think the first thing we should do is spend both of these people to draw a card, because that card might change how we want to play out the rest of this turn. So let's go ahead and grab it and see what we get. Oh, wow, it's expensive. It's a distance three, 
spend a person and two cogs to get three victory points. So it's another cash out card. Uh, not sure if we're happy or sad about that. The Merchant's Guild is now going to construct this archive for a single gray token. And what it lets them do is spend one person, which they have a ton of, to get one victory point, And they can do that twice per turn. So that's quite powerful for them. There is one key thing about this assembly plan that I did not really see when I first drew it, and that is that it makes a deal into cogs. And right now we don't have any cogs, and we need one cog and one person every turn in order to keep making tons of gray tokens, which are nice to build our engine out. So I think what we're going to do now is we're going to use this junk train, which well, I wasn't sure if it was a good idea or not, but we're going to do it. We're going to get our three uh, our blue contact tokens, and then we can use those to get a cog every turn, including this turn. The Merchant's Guild has decided to use this ammo as a brick because it is wild, and they're going to play down this bioweaponry card, and while doing that, they're going to discard this ruins because it matches every single type. So this is gone, and then, as you can see, it's going to let them spend a worker and a gun in order to get two more victory points. So they just have uh, quite a few ways to get victory points in front of them right now. And every time you develop, you get a victory point, so we are now tied. It's back to us, and let's go ahead and make a deal with this assembly plant. So we'll spend all three of these contact tokens, and then we'll spin this around, and it's going to immediately generate us a cog, which we should be able to save uh, onto the next turn, and in fact, we're going to make another one, so we might even have more cogs than we need, but I'm sure we'll find a way to use them. The Merchant's Guild is going to activate their archive twice, and for each worker they put down, they're going to get one victory point. So they take the lead and go up to five points. It's back to us, and I think that we should go ahead and spend these two bricks here. We're going to activate our abandoned suburbs. We can do it one more time on this turn if we got two more bricks. And when we do that, we're going to generate two victory points, which means that the game is once again tied. The Merchant's Guild is going to send one of their people to the deserted colony, and when they do that, they will generate a single ammo. And now I think it's probably time for us to build cards. We see that we have four contact tokens, so we could do quite a bit of things. One thing's for sure, though, I think we want to build this quarry. And the reason for that is because it's going to make us a brick every turn, which is nice, but it would also be our third brick symbol, which means that this would make three bricks a turn. So in total, we'd make four bricks a turn, which would be four points. And that seems like a pretty good uh, exchange. So go ahead and plop that down and spend the one gray token. And the quarry will generate one brick for us right now. Now the Merchant's Guild is going to activate their bioweaponry. They send a single worker and this ammo token, which counts as a, well, anything, but it counts as a gun in this case. And that's going to get them two points, putting them up to seven. We've got three gray contacts left and these four cards. I think what we're probably going to want to do is build this one for sure and then one of these two. This wreck tank is not particularly good because we don't actually have any of those lime green Statue of Liberty symbols. So I think our last two turns are just going to be building these two cards. This is nice because it's going to get us those development tokens so we can easily swap the cards out in our tableau. Uh, especially we could put like a three, distance three down for a distance one or even play things like wreck tanks and then destroy them later on and we got the points out of them. So let's start by building the excavator. That's going to cost us two of these gray tokens and it immediately generates us this development token. And it's back to the Merchant's Guild, but they pass. They have nothing else that they want to do, so they won't be taking any more actions. So it's back to us, and we can take as many actions as we want, really. So let's go ahead and build this Assassin. That's going to cost us this one gray contact marker, because it's distance one. It'll generate us a gun immediately, which is nice, and we can take another action. And at this point, really, the only options we have are spending a brick or this development token in order to place one of these two cards in our hand down and discard one of these on the board, and, of course, get a victory point for it. The issue is that I don't think we really want to do either of those. This one is pretty good to get down and it's distance three. However, I don't really want to rip any of these cards out at the moment because they're kind of doing stuff for me. I guess this assassin isn't doing a ton. I could potentially just squeeze a victory point out of it and get this guy down. But I might also draw into cards that want, make me want to use guns. So I think at this point, we're going to go ahead and pass. This development token is going to get discarded, but we're going to make another one next turn and potentially do something with it. And we get to save two out of these three things. And I think we're going to go ahead and get rid of this gun because we already make a gun. So we're going to get two next turn regardless, and we'll save both of these guys. So now both players clean up all the stuff that they did not use, and we get ready for the next turn. The start player marker moves back to us, and we're going to actually discard this thugs card because nobody took it and reveal two new cards for the beginning of the third turn of the game. And we go right into the lookout phase where we'll draw three cards, and now we get first dibs. So we get to take a look and see what the options are and decide which one we want to grab. What we're looking for is ways to draw more cards and get more workers. And unfortunately, these three are not great for that. We have a couple cogs and a fuel down in the deal section. 
And uh, this guy lets you spend cogs into victory points, which isn't great for us. We already saw one of these earlier. You can spend people and cogs to get victory points. And this one just gives us three uh, fuel that we can use at any point, and then it kind of goes away. I think the best thing for us is to take this scrap trader. We might end up using him for his ability, but we could also just uh, spend two red tokens to raise him. We'll get two cogs we, we can potentially use, and more importantly, we're going to grab a card from that. So we'll put that into our hand, and then our opponent is going to look at both of these, and they decide they want to grab this assembly plant. Now we draw three more, and the Merchant's Guild gets to pick first. They decide that they're going to grab a, another bioweaponry and try to get that built for them. And now it's back to us, and these really aren't that great for us either. This lets us put three one-time use bricks on it, but we're making four brick a turn right now, so that's not really important to us. And this guy, well, he lets us spend fuel, which we don't really make any of, to get point, points. But we can destroy him, get a couple fuel and a card, so we'll go ahead and take that one and see what we can do with it. Now we both produce, so we get three people, a gray token, we get two guns, four bricks, a development token, this cog here, a card off the top of the deck, and lastly, a victory point. Unfortunately for us, while we get one point, our opponent gets two points as part of their deals. Unfortunately, the card we randomly drew was this arena, which lets us get guns for all the gun tokens we already have, up to a max of three, and we already make quite a few guns, so that's not very good for us. We did not have a good draw, I think the first thing we're going to do is just spend two workers in order to draw one more card from the top of the deck and hope that it's something that we can use. And, oh man, well, it's distance one, which is nice because we didn't have a distance one before, but it's another way to make guns, and that is not something we really needed. The Merchant's Guild is just going to start right out by spending both of their great tokens to build another bioweaponry, put it down into their action area. You are allowed to have two of the same location. I think we want to try our card luck one more time. So in order to destroy either of these two cards, we're going to need a red contact token. So let's spend one gun in order to make three. Oops, I forgot to take that off from the last round, but we'll spend that one down and get three more. The Merchant's Guild is going to spend their fuel in order to grab three blue contact tokens. So it's back to us, and let's go ahead and raise one of these two cards here. The decision really is, what do we want from the spoils? This one's going to get us two cogs and a card, and this one gets us two fuel and a card. Now, fuel is not great because we can only use it at a rate of one-to-one -to, -one to get a single blue contact token, which I suppose would let us make a deal with this assassin to get another gun. We're already making two guns a turn. We don't really need to make even more than that. Uh, whereas this guy makes two cogs, and we do have the option of spending two cogs to get two more gray uh, contact tokens so we can build more stuff. So I think it makes sense for us to destroy this one right here. So we'll spend the two red contact tokens, and as a spoils, we're going to get those two cogs and a card. All right, so let's see what we got from the top of the pile. It is a pub. Oh, this is great. This is actually perfect. It's a distance two. It is open production, so my opponent can use it, but it'll let me draw two cards immediately and generate cards every single turn. This is wonderful. The Merchant's Guild is going to make a deal with the corner shop, so that's only going to cost them a single one of their blue contact tokens. And what it's going to generate for them is another ammo. We want to get this pub built, and it's a distance two, and we only have one gray token, so I think we're definitely going to spend our worker and our cog to activate the huge machinery, and that will get us three more gray tokens. The Merchant's Guild now makes a deal with the Motel. It's a distance of two, so it's going to cost them their last two blue contact tokens. They're going to go ahead and slide this in, and you'll see that this actually generates them a card every turn, including right now. I think it's time to build the pub. It's going to generate two cards, so that could definitely modify how we're going to play the rest of our turn. And in fact, I'm starting to run out of room on the screen here, so I'll kind of scoot this over here, place the pub down, and that's going to cost us two of our gray uh, tokens. And when we build it, it immediately produces a card for us, and there's a building bonus of grabbing another card. Let's see what we get. It is a gun shop. Oh, man, this is really good for us. We already have good gun production. In fact, we have some more in our hand that we didn't even play. And this lets us spend a person and two guns to get three victory points. So we finally have a way to liquidate these guns that we're potentially making. And the church, well, it's really not that bad. We could make a deal for it to get a point, or we could just destroy it to get some points. It's just points all around. So let's go ahead and pass it on to the other player. The Merchant's Guild is going to activate their first bioweaponry by spending a worker and an ammo as a gun. That will generate two victory points. This is going to bring them over to 11. It's our turn again, but I just realized we have these resources as well. So we have, we have honestly way too many resources. We're going to have a hard time uh, liquidating all these, but let's see what we can do. So we've got these two great contact tokens and quite a few different options available to us. Uh, well, first of all, we can't even build these over here with them, 
But uh, this church right here, it just gets us two victory points the moment we build it. And this is pretty important because we have a development token right here, which means we can discard any card to play any card from our hand, including one of these threes, like the gun shop, which is great for us, and get another victory point for it. So we could play the church and then liquidate it, essentially get three points and get a really expensive building down. The other options are, well, this guy would let us turn fuel into money, but we don't make fuel. The assassin makes guns, however, the arena might actually be good for us now. It makes even more guns than the assassin, and we'll finally have a way to liquidate those guns into victory points. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to do the church plan. We'll build that down into our feature zone. It's going to spend both of our gray tokens, and that'll get us two points, which brings us over to eight. We're now back to the Merchant's Guild, and they are pretty much in a victory point liquidation phase of this round. The, the cards they got didn't really make much for their production, so they're going to activate the Bioweaponry again. This ammo is once again going to be a gun, and that generates two more points. And this brings them up to 13, and remember, the game ends once one person crosses this 25-point threshold, and then you finish the round and see who has the most points when you add up one point for all the abilities you have. So we're definitely still behind. We need to try to catch up, and this game is well on its way. I think we should keep rolling with the development plan for our turn, so we're going to spend this token, and we could take this gun shop and replace any card on the board with it, because this token essentially makes the card that we're getting rid of wild. So I kind of like the idea we're turning this church into a gun shop, so the gun shop goes down here, the token gets discarded, and every time you do a development action, you get a victory point. So we're now at 9. The Merchant's Guild decides they want to activate their deserted colony twice, so they're going to use one of their three one-time use camp workers, and every time they do that, they're going to grab an ammo token, so they get two ammo. So it's our turn, and we've got quite a lot of stuff going on. We'd love to be able to use this gun shop this turn, but unfortunately, it does require a worker, and at this point, I'm not seeing any ways to make workers. None of our cards have deal options for workers. None of our cards' options have spoils to grab workers, so we're probably not going to be able to use this on this turn. However, that doesn't stop us from maybe building a good gun infrastructure, even if we end up wasting some stuff. I think we should probably spend these two cogs right here in order to get two gray tokens so that we can build one of these uh, two distance cards from our hand. The Merchant's Guild is going to spend both of these ammo as gears in order to do the same thing. They're going to grab two gray contacts and put them into their area. So we can now build any of these two value cards. Uh, but when we look at it, we have this arena, which would generate us uh, guns up to a max of three for all the gun symbols we have. Well, we'd kind of be drowning in guns at that point. We do want two guns a turn, but we do already make two guns a turn, so that's not that big of a deal. And then this oil trader lets us spend one fuel to get a point up to twice a turn, and we haven't made a single fuel this entire game yet. And we don't even make any ammo, which is a wild. So I think what actually makes sense is we should build this wrecked tank. It's only going to get us one victory point, but every single turn we are generating another one of these development tokens so we can turn that wrecked tank into pretty much anything we want to from our hands. So we're kind of building the groundwork for that. So we'll go ahead and build the wrecked tank and it's going to spend our two gray tokens and as you can see it says you get one point for every one of these Statue of Liberty lime green symbols, but it is the only one. Maybe we should have done this turn in a slightly different order because we did destroy that church earlier. We missed out on one victory point, but that's just what you get for ordering things wrong. we go up to 11 points. The Merchant Guild is now going to build their second construction vehicle. It only costs them a single one of these gray tokens, but it's going to immediately generate two more, one because that's just its production value, and then one for its building bonus. So we've got quite a few resources still left in front of us. I think what we definitely want to do, since we have five brick and we can only spend four down here, is we're going to spend one of these to do develop action. And I think what we want to do is take this arena and get rid of the assassin. The arena is going to make us one gun for every gun symbol we have, and we already have two, so it's just going to make us more guns, which we might want in the future. Plus, we just don't really need to have both of these coexisting at the same time at this point in the game, and whenever we do a develop action, we get a point, and points are good. So we go up to 12 points, and then the arena produces two guns for us. The Merchant's Guild is going to discover this fuel tank location that is only a distance of one, so it costs them one of their great tokens, and it's an open production building which is going to generate them one fuel. It's back to us, and why don't we take these four bricks and activate the abandoned suburbs. So for every two bricks we put down, we get two points, and we can do that up to two times, so that's four points. So for the first time in a while, we are in the lead, and we're at 16 points. The Merchant's Guild now discovers this oil rig. It's a distance of two, so it's going to cost these 
two gray tokens, and it's going to get them one fuel for every fuel token they already have. That synergized really well with that fuel tank. So looking around, right now they have the two, so they're going to make two more fuel. It's back to us, and realistically the only option we have is we can spend this one red contact token to raise this assassin to get two guns, but we already have more guns than we can use. We can only save two things between every turn anyway, so I think at this point we're going to go ahead and pass and leave the rest of the actions to our opponent. But fortunately for us, the Merchant's Guild is also out of things they can do, so they're going to go ahead and pass, and we'll go into the cleanup phase. So we're going to go ahead and remove all of these goods, but we do have a decision to make. We've got this Thieves' Den, and it can save two out of these four things over here. Now, we are right now generating one, two, three guns a turn, and we're only making one cog, so I think we may as well save a gun and a cog and waste two of these guns. It's okay, we're making plenty. Neither of us went for either of these connections, so they're both going to get discarded. And lastly, the first player marker is going to move over to our opponent. So we begin with the lookout phase, where we're going to draw three more cards. The Merchant's Guild player gets to choose from these first. And they look very happy to see this Oilman Fortress, considering they just built this crazy uh, fuel infrastructure. So they're going to grab this card, and then we get to grab one of these two. This one lets us uh, have another way to convert our clay into victory points, but... We already have a really good way of doing that, and we don't make workers very often. And unfortunately, this underground warehouse, well, it lets us store things, but we don't really need to store more things. This might be the last turn of the game. I think let's go ahead and just take this one here because we could always destroy it to potentially get a victory point for it. And then we'll draw three more, and we get first dibs on this set here. The first guy is uh, Sharash. This is actually interesting. This is a token we haven't seen yet. It's an open contact token. It's red, gray, or blue. It's universal, kind of like the ammo tokens for the goods. So this is pretty cool, except it might be a bit late in the game for this to matter. We've got a radioactive fuel. This lets us spend a person and a fuel to get two points. Well, we're still not making fuel, so that's not good for us. And then a gunsmith lets us spend one gun to get one red contact token. We can do it twice a turn. This, I think, is actually great for us, now that I think about it, because we are already making more guns than we need, so we can make more red contact tokens and potentially raise some of the cards in our hand to get points, and it just it gives us options. So let's go ahead and grab the gunsmith, and when they look at both of these, I'm pretty sure, let me just take a quick look to see, yep, that can only be activated once, they're going to grab this radioactive fuel and discard this guy. So now we produce, the Merchant's Guild makes some people for fuel, a couple ammo, a whole bunch of gray contact tokens, and then they're going to get a card from the top of the deck and two victory points. This brings them just underneath us to 15 points. And then we get to produce. We get three people, one gear, three guns, a gray contact token, four brick, this uh, development token. We also get this gear and this gun off of our Thieves' Den that we were saving. We're going to grab an extra card for the pub and our regular card from our main production. And finally, we're going to get one victory point. And that brings us to 17. And of course, during the lookout phase, I should have revealed these connection cards, so we got merchants for two blue contacts and punks for two red contacts. For the merchant guild's action, they're going to take one of their fuel and put it on the board in order to grab three blue contact tokens. And now it's our turn, and let's take a look at the two random cards we just pulled from production. We have a school, which produces one person and then gets an additional one as a building bonus. So that is pretty good. It would have been nice to have this earlier. We've been struggling with not having enough workers all game long. And the other one is, oh man, the murderer's pub. This gives us one victory point for every gun symbol in our state, up to a maximum of five. And currently, well, I guess we only have two. This would be a third one. But we have, let's see, we have this uh, gunsmith we were thinking about building, and then this assassin, and both of those are distance one. So we could potentially get up to five victory points out of this card. So we have some pretty good options on our turn. But before we can get too creative with our hand, I think let's go ahead and activate our huge machinery. Just get that out of the way. So that's one worker and one cog. And that's going to get us three more gray contact tokens. And the big reason to do this early is because looking at the board, we're currently at 17 points. It's pretty likely that we're going to make it over the 25-point threshold, and this will be the last turn of the game. So that means, knowing that, I could use uh, this development token or maybe one of the bricks to destroy this huge machinery or develop out of the huge machinery uh, and put a much better card down because we've already used it. That's fine. We've got everything we need out of it. We don't anticipate another turn to activate it again. The Merchant's Guild is going to make a deal with this assembly plant. It's distance three, so it's going to cost all three of their blue tokens, but they're going to flip it over and make a deal for these gears. So they'll slide that down there and immediately generate one gear for their state. So now we have four gray contact tokens. In order to make this little combo work to maximize the Murderer's Pub, we only need four. 
we have other options, of course, though. There are the open production construction vehicles uh, that our opponent has that we could potentially send people to, but we don't have very many people, but we could make some people with the school. I think let's just start rolling with this, and we'll see how many points we're able to squeeze out of this particular turn. So obviously, the Murderer's Pub goes last. Let's go ahead and play this Gunsmith down. It is an action, and it's only one away, so we'll go ahead and grab the Gray Contact Token, throw that away, and now we have this option to get more Red Contact Tokens with our guns. Before I go into the Merchant Guild's turn, I just realized they actually forgot to draw a card for their deal up here, so I'm going to go ahead and take this card and add it into their hand. And now they're going to take one of their workers and activate the Deserted Colony, and this will generate another ammo for them. Let's keep going forward with our Murderer's Pub plan. So first we've got to get this Assassin down, so we're going to play it. Uh, I've kind of run out of room, so I'm just going to put it right here. Just remember that it's a production building, and that's going to cost us one of our Gray Tokens, and it's going to immediately produce for us another gun. The Merchant's Guild is now going to spend a gear and an ammo as a gear in order to activate their player board action, which will grab them two more Grey Contact Tokens. So now let's go ahead and cash out this Murderer's Pub. It is a feature, so we'll play it down there. It's Distance 2, which is going to get rid of our last two Grey Contacts for the moment. And we'll get one victory point for every gun building we have in our state. That's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And the max is 5. So that's going to push us all the way up to 22. The Merchant's Guild is going to discover this Oilman Fortress, so that is three Grey Contacts because it's three distance away, and that goes down into their action zone. So now we can look forward to the rest of our turn, and one thing to keep in mind is we have the Skyscraper, which would let us spend one person and two bricks to get three points. Now we do have these uh, Abandoned Suburbs, which lets us just spend two bricks to get two points, but this is a slightly better conversion ratio as long as we have the workers to support it. Now right now we have no Grey Contact tokens, but we could get rid of this development token in order to place this skyscraper down on top of the huge machinery. Even though none of the icons match, that's the benefit of having a development token. And once we do that, we would then want to use one, uh, two people, and we currently have two people. But at the same time, every card that's in our state is worth one victory point at the end of the game. So it would be nice to be able to play this school. And in fact, we have an option to because we can spend one of our workers over to the opponent on their construction vehicles and that will get us a gray contact token which we can then use to play the school and get two workers back so we'll still have enough workers to activate everything we want and we'll have one extra building in our state to get us an extra point so let's go ahead and do that so our worker goes on to our opponent's construction vehicles it's going to make our gray token but it is also going to give our opponent one more worker that they can play with at this point, in order to save table space, I can tell you that neither of the players, us or the opponent, are going to be doing any of these connection cards on this final turn of the game. So I'm going to go ahead and discard those so that there's a little more space to work with. The Merchant's Guild is now going to discover the Radioactive Fuel location. That is a distance of two. They happen to have two gray tokens, so they're going to go ahead and use those and put them down into their actions area. We've now got this one gray token, so let's go ahead and spend it in order to build the school. Uh, we are once again running out of space, so let's go ahead and remove this main deck of cards, and we'll push the school over there and slide this guy over to make it very obvious that this is a production building. And the school is going to generate for us one worker immediately, and then we also get a bonus worker. And that brings us back up to three workers. The Merchant's Guild has decided it's time to start cashing out points. They're going to activate the bioweaponry with a person and an ammo, uh, taking the place of the gun. That's going to get two points for them. So that brings them up to 17. But for us, instead of cashing out points, I think we should spend one of these guns onto our player board in order to get three red uh, contact tokens. This combined with the gunsmith means we can potentially destroy one of the uh, Merchant Guild's action buildings before they can activate it. We probably should have done this earlier in the turn in retrospect, but hopefully we can get this done fast enough to at least destroy one of them. Now the Merchant's Guild decides they may as well activate their Oilman Fortress. So they'll put one worker down there as well as two fuel, and that will generate them three victory points. So that brings them from 17 all the way to 20. So now let's throw two of these guns over onto the gunsmith. That's fine because it leaves us two left, and the gun shop can only be activated once, and it just needs two guns. So these will both go down. This can be activated twice, and for each gun we put down, we're going to get one red contact token. So that brings us up to five, which is the amount we need to destroy an opponent's action spot. The Merchant's Guild is starting to sweat a little bit. I think they can see what's coming. They're going to go ahead and activate this radioactive fuel over here with a worker and a fuel. That'll still get them two victory points. And this actually ties the game up at 22 points each. And now it's time to raise their location. We're just barely in time because you know they would have activated that last one on their next turn. So we'll spend the five tokens and we will destroy this bioweaponry spot. It's going to get us two guns and a victory point, which is nice. We don't really need the guns at this point. And uh, the Merchant's Guild will, of course, scavenge a gun from the ruins. 
These two guns will be for us, and then that victory point puts us to 23, and we are slightly in the lead again. The Merchant's Guild is now going to spend an ammo as a brick, and they're going to do a develop action with this ruins that I just created. They probably would have done this anyway with one of the other cards that they had expended by then, so I don't think this really affected their plans too much. And this is a crossroads. It's going to give them two cards immediately. And then, of course, you get one victory point every time you develop. So the game is once again tied. I think it's time to find this skyscraper. It is distance three away, but that's okay because we're going to throw away this development token to essentially develop this huge machinery into a skyscraper. The goods that were on it just get tossed out of the game. That's no big deal. And I kind of like how a huge machinery turned into a skyscraper thematically. That's pretty cool. And we get a, another victory point for doing that development action. We're at 24, one away from the threshold, but looking at our options, we're definitely going to be going way beyond that. The Merchant's Guild is going to now use this gun, which I sort of gave to them by destroying their bioweaponry, and they're going to put it on their player board, and that'll generate them two red contact tokens. And now for us, I think it's finally time to cash out these points, so let's go ahead and activate this skyscraper first that costs a person and two of our bricks, and that'll get us three victory points. And that brings us up to 27, which means it is now officially the final round of the game, but of course, we'll keep going until everybody takes all their actions. And the Merchant's Guild is going to raise this clay pit from their hand. It's going to generate for them two bricks. It costs them their two contact tokens, and it will get them one victory point. So that brings them up to 24. Let's keep working from the left to the right. So we'll now hit the abandoned suburbs with these two bricks here. And the two bricks are going to generate for us two victory points. So that gets us up to 29. The Merchant's Guild is going to spend one of their bricks to do a development action. They're going to develop this ruined library from this deserted colony, so that also thematically makes kind of sense. We'll discard this worker here. This makes sense because, of course, one of the symbols matches, so that goes down there. And that'll make them one point, so they're now at 25. Now it's time to go to the gun shop. So we'll send a worker and two of our ample guns, and that will generate for us three victory points. And that brings us up to 32 points. The Merchant's Guild is once again going to spend a brick to do a development action. And when I think about it, I gave them that gun, which let them do um, all these things. The gun turned into a point for raising that thing, and it gave them two bricks, and then they're doing two developments. I essentially gave them three points. I'm not even sure if destroying that building ended up being worth it for me. It's a little hard to math out when I think about my other options, but either way, they were lucky to have that card that got them the two brick in their hand, I suppose, and they're doing a really good job of that, so they're going to discard this, and with the fuel tank, they're going to go ahead and, I guess, turn this oil rig into just a gigantic fuel tank. And they develop, so they get one more point, which brings them to 26. And now it's back to us, and I think we've exhausted everything we can do on our turn. With these two guns, well, we can't get any more co contact tokens, and all of our actions are maxed out. Well, I guess if we had two more brick, we could do something here, but there's no way to generate brick at this point. We could send this person over to the opponent's side to their, um, their construction site to get one gray token, but both of the cards we have in our hand are distance two, so that doesn't do anything. And this one gear, well, we need two gears in order to get two gray, so unfortunately, we are just one away from doing some more cool stuff, but that's the way it works. Uh, we are out of things to do, so we're going to pass, and that's it for us in this game. And as the Merchant's Guild's final action, they're going to take the last two people from their camp and put them down on the archive. We kind of forgot they had an archive, otherwise we probably wouldn't have even gone to the open construction to give them an extra person, to give them an extra point. I guess it kind of evens out at the end. But anyway, the archive, it can be activated twice, and for each person you put down on there, you get one point. So, Blue gets two more points, and that brings them to 28. We pass already, and it comes back to the Merchant's Guild, and they are officially out of things they can do as well. So they pass. We would now go into the cleanup phase, but there's really no reason to because the game is now over. We've crossed the 25-point threshold. And the last thing to do is add victory points for the locations we have in our state. We get one point for every single one in our state. The Merchant's Guild was able to build 11 total locations, so they get 11 more points. They go from 28 to 39, and that is their final score. But we were able to build 14 locations. So we go from 32 to 46, and we have a rather decisive victory, 46 to 39. If we had had a tie, then the tiebreaker is simply the number of stuff that you still have uh, with wooden bits and also the contact tokens, all that stuff. Whoever is the most individual bits on their board is going to um, win the tiebreaker. And that ends my full two-player game of 51st State, the Master Set, with just the basic cards with no expansions thrown in. Now that we've completed the full game, I'd like to talk about a couple initial impressions I have for the game. This is definitely not an in-depth review, just some thoughts I have after playing the game a couple times. And the first thought is that I've had a pretty good time playing it. I've definitely enjoyed playing this one more than I did Imperial Settlers, which was actually a branch off of the original 51st State game. So there's a lot of sharing of mechanics, but 
it felt pretty different to me for a couple different reasons. Um, but before I go into those specifically, I would like to say that just the mechanics of the game present a great puzzle. Like it's like most hand management games, I really love looking at my hand, looking at the resources that I have available to me, and try to plan out how much I can do before this round is over and all the resources are gone, and what order am I going to play the cards, and what is my opponent going to do? This is largely a multiplayer solitaire game. There is definitely the ability to destroy your opponent's stuff and really get in the way of their engine, but the um, the penalty for them, like for having a destroyed building, it's really easy to turn that building into something else. They also get a constellation prize, so sometimes it actually works out better for the opponent after that building gets destroyed, um, which kind of flies in the face of the person who did the attacking, but that's okay. I like that kind of interaction, and I like how much of the game can just play out um, in a solitaire-ish kind of setting, because you do have this hand of cards, and you want to plan out the order of everything, and if every time that went around the table and came back to you, the board state was completely different, um, analysis paralysis and downtime could really become an issue. There is definitely quite a bit to think about, but fortunately this is kind of a simultaneous analysis game. <laughs> There's so much to think about and the actions are so small that oftentimes it seems like you know you're going to be uh, converting that gun into three um, uh, of the red contact tokens and you're not sure what else you're going to do, so you get to you and you're like, well, I'm going to do that. Get my tokens, okay, it's the next person's turn, and you go back to thinking about your hand. Uh, now, if everybody does this, it can come back to you pretty quickly, but I, I've enjoyed the decisions that the game presents. Uh, when you compare it to Imperial Settlers, uh, there are two big differences to me. The first is that this is a race to 25 points, which will end the game, which means that some games will be longer than others. Uh, and so far, actually, the uh, two complete games I've played so far have both ended in four turns, which I'm sure is not always going to be the case, but a full game of Imperial Settlers always goes five turns. So um, 51st State has been shorter for me in my experience so far, an entire turn shorter, and it just feels like I'm able to do more stuff on the early turns and do less stuff in the late turns than Imperial Settlers, because Imperial Settlers had this crazy action curve where near the end of the game, you have so many things you can do, and there's definitely quite a few things you can do in 51st State once you've built your engine and it's going, but this leads me to the second big difference, and that is that there is this extra layer of um, restriction before you can make stuff. You have to turn things into contact tokens and then use those tokens to do things. And uh, at first glance, this might seem a bit silly, like why throw an extra thing in there? Just use the things to build the buildings. But what this means is you need to really pay attention to the resources that you've got in front of you because you can easily build way more resources than you can use. Whereas in a game of Imperial Settlers, you can usually use most of the stuff because the cards in your hand cost those basic resources. And if you just draw lots of cards, which you really need to do in that other game, you could usually spend most of the cards you have uh, just burning through and building a bunch of cards that you may not even need. But in this game, it can be kind of hard. Like In order to get those great contact tokens to build buildings, the first couple turns, you probably won't get more than two or three in the entire turn. Uh, near the late game, you might be able to get more. It depends on the cards you grab. But you're going to be building a lot less cards in this game than Imperial Settlers. And I like the way it really makes you think about whether you want to spend those uh, precious resources to build this building if it's going to give you resources that don't really do something for you. So. It's got decisions that I like better than Imperial Settlers, and I think at this point I've talked about it enough. I've really enjoyed the game. I haven't even played either of the two expansions yet, and I'm looking forward to it because the base game is good, but I could see it getting stale somewhat quickly, and after flipping through the expansion cards, it looks like it's going to add quite a few cool synergies and all that kind of stuff. I'll probably never play just the base game again, and I'm looking forward to getting plays in with those expansions. So I hope this has been uh, interesting to you, that this has given you some insight into the game, and I really hope that you enjoy the actual playthrough. If you'd like to see even more full game playthroughs like this one, as well as in-depth board game reviews and vlogs, please subscribe to my channel. Uh, also, you can directly support the channel at patreon.com slash Thanks for watching.